going towards uh, the second session of the day, okay. uh, which is going to be about uh, SAP Business Object uh, Private Cloud Edition, so also known as uh, PCE. Correct. That could be also part of a RISE initiative as well. Right. And then um, you know, we'll have uh, two additional guests today. Uh, one will be uh, Nathan Crook, who's a senior solution account exec at SAP. And uh, we'll also have uh, Patrick Nismis, who's uh, managing director uh, at uh, Protivity. Patrick, I'll let you uh, get started with uh, your presentation and you know, tell right. us what uh, Business Object Private Cloud Edition is and uh, what people need to know and why it makes sense to go. Because in fact, uh, I think over what, a year and a half or so, we've actually started to see quite a good traction from customers going to PC. And we've yeah. actually got a, quite a few projects even right now going on on that. So there's definitely some, there's a momentum going there. And the fact that there is going to be a version after 4.3 will definitely help that because people will know, hey, I'm doing that investment. It's, it's, go, it, it's, it's going to move on, so. Right, exactly. Yep, so can you see my new slides? Uh, not yet, not yet. Um, okay, I can, yes, we do now. All right. Well, let's just dive right in and we'll kind of banter and get questions and go from there. Mm -hmm. So I should have had the disclaimer on earlier, right? So the usual SAP disclaimer, anything we're talking about that's future state uh, is subject to change. Don't make your buying decisions based on that, et cetera, et cetera. So what is Bob J Private Cloud Edition or BOE Private Cloud Edition, right? So it is a cloud option and it becomes a simple modular cloud subscription from a pricing standpoint that includes licenses, infrastructure, and operations. And then we also have additional offerings in terms of onboarding, customer enhancements, and implementation that we can, can put in there as well. Some key things here, right, is that it's built based on 100% best practice reference architectures, and it's built and maintained by the guys who build the product. So, you know, nobody has more experience than them in terms of, you know, product development and engineering and operations, right? So don't you want to go with them? And of course, the, it, it is designed to be future-proof as a standard, right? That's kind of a tagline there in that sense. Um, it's also engineered to try and make sure that we have maximum uptime. And uh, I lost some other key points there. And that, those are the main ones really to me, the, the key bullets there, right? So um, it's all about best practices from our side, which, you know, quite frankly, through the years, wisdom webinars, for instance, have often delved into, hey, what are SAP's considerations of best practices for this or for that? Well, with PCE, you kind of get them out of the box. Some key benefits there. Number one, it is the only multi-cloud enterprise platform that still is out there in the market today. And I'd say if we want to look at really kind of the two other big kickers, as Bruno mentioned, PCE has been gaining steam. I think that total cost is one, but also risk reduction is the other, right? So from a total cost perspective, right, you get to exit the business of operating your Bob J environment and letting IT and your infrastructure folks do perhaps more important or things that, you know, that, they don't always want to do with the Bobby side. Um, so it lets you kind of rotate those scarce resources to higher value things. It lets you consolidate multiple environments from both a technical standpoint, but also more importantly, from a license and cost standpoint as well, right? Some of you who've been on Bob J for 10 or more years probably have multiple different contracts and licenses that you're looking at. So this is a nice way to kind of rectify that and have everyone starting from the same point. It also gives you a chance to right size your current capacity to what your actual usage is in a perhaps more cost efficient manner than trying to retire licenses since you can't really retire licenses. Um, it also reduces risk. Um, I'd say the biggest thing is that number one, a lot of customers, because of their own test dev Q&A processes, have stayed, you know, have lagged behind on service packs and such. And with PCE, we kind of 
hold your hand and make sure that you do that once a year. It also means that if, if I'm with the IRS and Nathan's with, you know, a random commercial entity, when we call support, support does not have to try and, you know, and spend days on the different vagaries between our two environments, because guess what? It's the same environment. So I think that from a risk and support standpoint, that's another huge thing to consider. And Patrick there, um, do you, does the customer control when the new version will be implemented? Yes. So we ourselves have moved to pretty much a strict calendar of December releases for all of our service packs. Mm. But then the customer as part of their SLA has the ability to decide when they want that service pack to come into play. Okay. So for example, if you're dealing with a retailer and of course we're in November, right. December is big, you're not going to do uh, a service or he, he's not going to get a service back at that time. Right. right. We don't force it. We there, you know, I think we may only let you, I, you know, honestly, I haven't seen the current SLA, so I'm not sure what the timing is on that, but we do give you at least two or three choices on when you want to make the move. Okay. So support scope, I think this is where we start to get into what's the big difference, right? So, um, on-premise, obviously, you're covering everything from the technical infrastructure management and setup to services to application management and other implementation capabilities. As we kind of answered one of the earlier questions in terms of hyperscaler choice, if you bring your own licenses to a hyperscaler of your choice and do more of an infrastructure as a service, then obviously that service provider is handling the bottom two buckets, but you're still in charge of the application development and the implementation services. But if you move to PCE, then really we, SAP, are handling all of that green line. So everything from the infrastructure services, servers, hardware, database management, OS, everything, up through uh, application management, uh, and then really what you're left to do is, you know, universe development. We're not going to take that kind of thing out of your hands, right? That's still business critical for you. So we just really, you know, by taking care of everything below that line, from the, below the blue, we're giving you more time and resources to focus on those pieces of the platform that are more important for you to deploy to your end users. So basically the, the, the daily administration will still be done by the customer in terms of security, in terms Correct. of scheduling. CMC uh, so, access. You yes, still have it. CMC access. You're still doing that kind of work. Exactly. And all the testing as well will still be done by the customer. Correct. I mean, certainly we will, you know, we'll, we will test before we, you know, put like for December, this December, you know, the next 29 days, we will certainly have tested on our own, you know, environments to make sure that service pack three right. is, is a good fit. But then of course, you know, your own environment, you'll want to make sure that the universes and the reports and everything still function along those lines. So yeah, that's and we're connected properly. Don't have any regrets. Exactly. Exactly. Now. Okay. Thanks. Exactly. Thank you very much for the clarification. Sure. And so this is another comparison. Uh, you know, it kind of gets down deep in terms of what do I do from a Bob JPCE perspective versus if I've brought my own licenses to a hyperscaler. Um, so I think really we've kind of already covered that. I think it makes sense, right? So there's just with, with PCE, all of the care and feeding of the environment itself is handled by us and all of the business context is handled by you. Yeah. We've got one question from Mike. Does the one upgrade per year apply only to the service back updates? What about if there is a new patch that is needed? Actually, you know what? I don't know. Nathan, do you know about patches versus service packs? I don't. <clears throat> I don't know specifically what the policy is around that, but I can't imagine needing a patch would be overlooked. Right. You know, if there's a timely business challenge there, I would imagine that patches are included in some way, shape, or form to that. Um, and not meaning not inclusive of the one upgrade. One upgrade is a 
version of some sort, right? Whether it's a dot dot something, or yeah. Whether it's a service pack do, dot or a yeah, or an actual yeah. dot version, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Patches, I would say, probably get fit under that umbrella some way somehow, but it's not going to take from that one. It's going right. to be if it needs to happen, it needs to happen, kind of thing. Absolutely. That's that's my guess. And my guess, we'll try and confirm that for you, but yeah, I, I yeah, believe exactly. that that's that's what I'm assuming as well. Hey, the good Patrick, do you know? You have yeah, I, I that? think that's the case. I think that the uh, the patches are are included. Obviously, they they need to be timely, right? So, right. Uh, I think in our experience uh, working with the PCE team, that's been the case. Yeah, I, to be frank, I would have been surprised of the the contract because if mm -hmm. if there's yeah, a, and I'm sure it's in there. It's just I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know what the timing is or, or what our promise in the SLA is, but I'm sure it's there. So, and definitely if there's a security patch, of course you want to absolutely it rolled out quickly. So I think that's, that makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> and when did I become the bad Patrick Bruno? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> there is no, well, it, it, you know, you might have to look in the mirror for that one. Patrick. Well, that's fair. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, I know there were questions uh, in the first section, and this will start to get to it a little bit about how we do pricing and configuring of PCE environments. And so we start with t-shirt sizes from a user configuration perspective, and that kind of dictates a lot of what we get from in terms of the uh, firepower we can throw at it. So as you can see, uh, small size is really from one to 500 named users and it delves into the around 10 to 180 concurrent sessions. Um, if you're doing a combined named and concurrent environment, our general rule of thumb is to take, let's say you have 50 concurrent sessions and 10 named users. We would size that at 160 named users. Uh, so we do three times uh, the, the concurrent sessions and total that with the uh, the name user population to come up with kind of your your guesstimate for the mixed environment there. So that's just an FYI. So small is up to 500 name users. Medium is 500 to 1,000. Large then goes from 1,000 to 3,000, and extra large is 3,000 plus. And they are subscription again. And as we mentioned before, it's both named and concurrent. We use an ASE database for the repository. And we use the Linux operating system for the rest of the infrastructure. Um, and I'll, oh, another key thing included with PCE is a two tier environment, um, but you have the ability to acquire non additional non productive tiers for, for other environments if you have a more multiple step uh, tier test environment than that. Um, and then, of course, it is the dedicated BOE landscape. We've got the yearly upgrades. Patching is included somehow. Again, we'll, we'll look for the SLA language on that. Um, and the client tools are accessed, again, from your network. So you get to CMC. You get to the client tools all from your network. I'll stop here and let people kind of take a look at it and see if there are any questions as well. And we've also got Nathan that can answer some of the questions in terms of shirt sizes as well. Yeah, and I see questions around security. Do you get to security, Patrick, in another slide? Um, I think it's in here. Uh, if it's not, we can certainly revisit that. Mm -hmm. So that was, actually was one of the questions from Eamon asking, you know, can you talk more about security in uh, uh, business object PCE, especially in the operation? And uh, I'm, I'm trying to think through the slides. Um, I, I'm sure we addressed it somewhere, but if not, we can certainly at the end of this, Nathan and I can can bang heads on that. And I, yeah. to and, be frank, and, Eamon, very, in yeah. terms of operation, what what specifically yeah. is your concern, or like break that down for me in terms? The operation is kind of a big and nebulous word, in, as I look at it. And to my knowledge, it's this shouldn't be an issue. We've actually got. Uh, federal deployments as well that are exactly PCE and that are also on um, NS2, so SAP NS2, so the government yep. of SAP. So I'd be yeah, very kind of a, issues on that. Kind of a starting point for that is the Trust Center. Mm -hmm. uh, SAP, I think it's SAP <laughs> Trust 
or SAP dot trust. Um, yeah. I think I'll if you just Google link. SAP trust center. Yeah. You'll up. find it. Um, that's going to give you a lot of your baseline um, for being able to pull down, you know, documentation, but I will say that security is of the highest and utmost importance to SAP just off Absolutely. the top without, you know, delving deeper into specifics around the operation. Um, but it, it is, we, we can't, just like every hyperscaler and every other cloud provider, we can't go into this with any sort of uh, sloppiness. It's got to be tipped right. up and of, mm -hmm. of the highest standard. And so that's what you'll find. Hey, good job, Andrew. Nice work. I can't see the audience, but uh, hey to everybody out there. Right. <laughs> good chance I probably know many of you. I can't even uh, see my co-presenters because I'm looking at the slides. <laughs> so, We're sharing yeah. on the bottom of the screen the, uh, the link to the trust center. Okay, great. Yeah, per perfect, yeah. So we'll, I'm sure, like you said, Patrick, you probably got a slide in here. I, I'm, I'm sure there is. Yeah. I haven't uh, seen this presentation in about a month or two, but I'm almost positive there's a security section. Yeah. And the other thing to bear in mind, too, and this goes back to kind of something we said in the first section. This is not a new set of code for business objects. It is business right. objects hosted in the cloud, just that we are doing it. So any security you know, weird wormholes you've had before in the past that you've been able to, to fix are all still there. That fix is still capable within Bob JPCE. Right. All right. Which gets us back to the included components. Look at me diving ahead. So again, in the current landscape, which is 4.3 service pack two, it's full use of all of the components from Crystal Classic to Crystal Enterprise to Webby to Lumira Designer to Analysis for Office. Live Office is still included right now. Um, and then from the platform side, really everything that you have today, high volume publication, bursting, scheduling, semantic layer, admin, etc. All of that is still there. That's really just to hammer home. This is not a different code line. It is not a different set of software. It is simply business objects hosted in the cloud by us. Is there any question or doubts on that or, or anything? If we have some questions, we'll just address them uh, okay. right after Patrick says. All right, sounds good. So as I mentioned before, when you, when you license for PCE, then you do have a two tier environment out of the box, but we do have additional non-productive tiers that you can license as well. And so that would include the t-shirt sizing, as you can see uh, at the bottom there, what, how big those cores are that you can add on from a non-productive tiering side. And so we never put out the direct pricing for you. If you have direct pricing questions, you can reach out to your sales folks on that one, but you just know that it'll be based on t-shirt sizing that we see. That makes it actually a lot easier in terms of it pricing. does. It's not as complex as what it could be. So that's actually quite nice there. Exactly. <clears throat> so while we're on the top topic of what's included or what's extra, right? So from a services standpoint, what we have that's included is a new deployment of business objects right now, 4.3 service pack, whatever's in play right now on the tenant hyperscaler of your choice. Uh, one major upgrade per year, again, to the latest certified and supported service pack or DOT release, um, regular system backups and monitoring, and standard operation services. What we don't have out of the box with that subscription is migration and advisory services to move from on-prem into the PCE environment. So you can either do that yourself or contract SAP services or the partner of your choice. And by the way, Probably most of the partners, I mean, Wisdom is a great example. Uh, most of our partners who are very well enmeshed in the BobJ world are, you know, already moving the PC direction as well. Well, actually, we've got Prativity that's on right now. And do you want to say a word about that? Yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll speak to that too. That, uh, yeah, I mean, we've, you know, we've been doing business objects upgrades for 20 plus years. Absolutely. Um, and so really uh, going to PCE isn't much different from just doing a typical upgrade. Um, however, there are some considerations. Um, I believe that Linux is still the only option. And Patrick Sims, you may be able to verify if, if that's correct. If Windows is going to be an option in the future, but um, 
But right now, yeah, you, it, it's on Linux. So what we tend to recommend is that we we stage the upgrade first. You know, we get you upgraded on Linux on premise, and then migrate up to PCE. And it, it's just a uh, an, another way to reduce risk. Um, and because of the way we, that um, you know we don't have access to the oper operating system level on PCE. So it allows us to figure out all the configuration settings and things like that and package that up and then put it in a ticket to uh, the PCE team. So uh, we found that, that by staging, uh, you know, it's a much smoother transition uh, to, to PCE. So, um, but other than that, it's it, like I said, it's, it's, it's like a, a typical um, upgrade. And if you're already on 4.3, it's, it's, you know, it's not even an upgrade, right? It's just right. A, a migration, so. And I would I would actually publicly thank Protivity because kind of your your testing and playing with the staging notion has become a best practice for us as well. So, you know, again, great partner community there. And and to that point on the Linux servers. So yes, um, it is Linux. So some of you might be scratching your heads and saying, well, what about Crystal? Because I need Windows servers for that. Well, we do have an option for you to add on Windows servers for the Crystal piece right. specifically. But as of right now, we're still going back and forth uh, internally on discussions as to whether to offer a Windows version of PCE as a whole. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're still on the Linux, except for Windows for, for Crystal. Hey, Patrick, from a at Protivity, like how long or when was your first migration to PCE? Uh, it's been, it was probably early last year. So it's it's been a while. It's wasn't yeah. long after PCE actually came out. Um, yeah, that's yeah, what we, I we we've got a number of clients already on PC PCE, including I think a a bank, a liquor distributor, a number of uh, different accounts. So yeah, I've got a question from Mike again with PC. You mentioned we still have CMC access, uh, but we also manage many different server configuration settings, property files, registry settings, etc in our windows environment what happens there with pce yeah. so so those are just handled through tickets uh to the pce team and they actually handle those configuration settings so that's why that's a, again another reason we like to do that that staging process so that we can uh figure out all those all those settings and then just package those up for the pce team right and and when you're going down the path you're assigned a cloud architect from the sap mm -hmm. side who works with you or Protivity or both to do that kind of thing. And then they are also your throat to choke when you're looking for support later on as well. We've got a question from Jeremy asking, does PC support Azure AD SSL? Do you guys know? So go ahead, Patrick, if you have an answer. I was, there. Just, gonna, I was gonna say, I think it does. Yeah, I think we handle that, and that's probably a good uh, a good question for the Ask the Expert session later on. I know we're going to have Nathan Truhan right. on there, but I think we handle that. It's through SAML, and he can probably talk uh, more to the technical details um, around that. But I know we can we can integrate and uh, do single sign on and things like that. On PC, can you still customize the BI Launchpad? Yes, to the extent that you're able to. I mean, I know the 4.3 Launchpad is not quite as customizable as some would like, but yes, everything you can do today in the tool is still something you can do with PCE. Okay. Uh, Patrick, I'll let you move on with uh, okay. your presentation. All right, so some other than more services that are included or optional as well. So you can see here, you know, mm -hmm. your support pack installs, backup of content, scan and repair diagnostics you know a whole but managing reverse proxy settings that's always a nice one right uh version management those are all included standard operational technical services but we do have an optional cloud application services package that we can that you can purchase as well and that and those actions um if you don't want to purchase it then of course these things can be done by the customer or the partner right so the notion of promoting objects between your tiers, uh, maintaining your authorizations and user access, SAML configs, all those kinds of things that really we're sort of we were sort of just edging on ask, answering questions for. 
other options, right? So a lot of times, especially in the government, we get the disaster recovery question. So we do have optional disaster recovery you can purchase as well. Um, and the technical details on that will, of course, vary by the hyperscaler, but it's all about having uh, a secondary region where you can uh, have your replicated database and FRS. And then we also do have, you know, in addition to the t-shirt sizing uh, based on users, we also have the additional options for you to add storage and additional app servers if you feel that you want better performance from that perspective as well. And so the disk storage is sold in blocks of 100 gigs and the additional app servers that we have are, uh, are done from a block of 64 gig perspective. I'll pause there because that probably will engender some questions. Um, Nothing coming through yet. All right. Yeah. One other thing too. So we mentioned in the first section how you know business object is alive and well, but it is a parallel analytics platform to SAP Analytics Cloud. And one thing that we've really found is taking off with our Bob J customer base is the notion of kind of right-sizing Bob J and moving some things to SAC, but retaining universes, retaining some of the enterprise reporting with Bob J and moving into kind of more of a hybrid deployment mode. And so we do have a private cloud extended edition that you can also have licensed where on the SAP side in the tenant, we will set up for you all of the things that you need to, to hybrid interoperate your SAP environment, your Baji environment and your SAC environment. So that includes cloud connectors, cloud agents, and the live data connectivity uh, capability between the two. And so are you able to recycle, Nathan, can you recycle some licenses? Let's say you're a non-prem, traditional on-prem Bob J customer, you right. want to go to PC and then you find out, okay, well, that brings it here. Let's say, look at you, Bruno, always, always going ahead. So yes. And that's, that's why I mentioned the right sizing, right? So what, what we see is that a lot of times people want to move into SAC, perhaps for the augmented analytics piece or the predictive piece, I'm sorry, or her predictive or the planning piece, mm -hmm. but we have perhaps, you know, less usage of the Bob J platform per se. So you can right size that and retire the maintenance dollars that you give up and extend those into your cloud purchase. And so that's a great benefit to doing that. That is right. You can ultimately fully um, work your way off of business objects True. into the analytics cloud as it matures and handles all of the different use cases over time. Because, you know, any of you and, and I have to imagine that we, we've got some some definite lineage here in the business objects world. Um, you know, business objects was created very long time ago at this point. And in terms of maturity in, in, the, in the analytics space, business objects is pretty much at where it's at. Um, you know, we, we're adding bells and whistles and things, but the, the reality is, is that it's not going to move into those next tiers of, of uh, augmented analytics and uh, generally taking advantage of, <clears throat> of, of the, the, the areas where you know other third-party solutions have really picked up the ball and run with and so you know being able to retire that maintenance over time as it makes sense but have a sustainable way of managing and keeping up with versions and keeping up with you know the the joneses as it were from a business object standpoint uh, th this represents a model that that you know ultimately can benefit through time, the, the organization to take steps in this direction. Right. And also just a couple of thoughts on that too. So to Nathan's point, right? Other vendors are doing kind of cooler, sexier things than Bob J per se, but SEC lets you do that on mm -hmm. existing investments. So That's universes right. that you've spent, you know, tailoring through the years, mm -hmm. actual webby documents as of 4.3 can become data sources for SEC as well. So you know, let's say Bruno was my star webby document writer, but I've always wanted to do some what if analysis on that. Well, hey, mm -hmm. that's a great example where I could take Bruno's webby document, access it through the live connect, and then add my own what if capability through the planning pieces of SAC. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. So I like the whole notion of extending what we have with with existing business objects work into those areas that that Bob J itself is not necessarily extended into, yep. but SEC has as well as third parties. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the the extension kind of really makes a lot of sense. You know, we've certainly had clients go down the path of, hey, we want to look at moving off of business objects onto something else, and you know, usually it ends up no, you know, business objects is, is somewhat mission critical, right? It's either serving, you know, uh, large numbers of, of customers, you know, externally or internal, you know, users, uh, you know, that need, you know, pixel perfect reports, uh, they need them delivered in a certain way, either out to an FTP server or in their email. Um, and, you know, they're also, they've got, you know, things like compliance reports that have to be in a very specific format and most of these other web-based tools can't do that so right. so we see a, a, a you know a very strong need to continue with business objects but then to add on these capabilities to, to gain deeper insights into data to do predictive analysis to do planning mm -hmm. and things like that and that's where this extension to sac makes a lot of sense and then over time as like nathan said as the you know, more and more functionalities added into, into SAC, maybe some of those um, things that you currently do in, in Bob J do get moved over there. Mm -hmm. but by the way, we see, so we do lots of scans. So we do lots of assessments, mm -hmm. uh, in fact, with Protivity. Yep. And uh, where we assess the environments of customers and uh, we give the customer an estimation of how much it's going to cost them to move to SAC, how long it's going to take all these questions and what we find out is on average there's about 30 percent of licenses that are typically not used that could be mm -hmm. recycled so that's actually it's a good time where you can recycle these and uh you can actually uh exchange them or i'm, I'm not sure the right wording is but uh recycle them towards sac so that's a, it's yeah, a recycles good, good. Yeah. yeah it's called the cloud extension policy but i like recycling because that's really yep. probably a better way to put exactly it. and yep. uh Nathan, I, you know, I've got a question, you know, as an AE at SAP, mm -hmm. from a customer perspective, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people are talking about PC and, and we see people going towards PC, but, you know, tell me why, what are your arguments for a customer to tell him, hey, you all look at PC, you should go to PC. Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, the 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 fundamentals of of the private cloud edition for for business objects have a lot of the traditional cloud arguments built into them. Um, I think one of the biggest is that business objects is a enterprise grade, heavy duty application that has all of the things you would look at in terms of you know a full blown ERP. Right, it's got the the servers, it's got the maintenance, it's got um, a lot of customization that's been built over time, and that ultimately makes it very difficult to to you know for these larger shops to keep up in terms of version. You, you know, you find one that works, you kind of want to stick there because everybody's been through a bad migration, and nobody mm -hmm. wants to repeat that. <laughs> and so, you know, ultimately one piece of it is that business objects is also 30 plus years old. The teams are being stretched to do other things outside of business objects in a lot of ways. Um, and, 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 or, you know, wanting to update their skill sets and move into other areas. And so ultimately being able to help, um, you know, give you, you know, invest into your people and help them continue to grow their skills and their skill sets and, and move into other aspects of data and analytics. Um, taking a lot of that maintenance effect is, is part of the, is part of argument number one, right? Be, the teams are constrained, time is constrained and being able to take the maintenance of all of this off of their hands, which is all sort of, you know, granular IT work and not very much business mm -hmm. value. Um, it is is probably number one. Uh, number two is setting yourself up for, uh, you know, keeping up with new features, keeping up with, um, 
the the newer releases that are coming out all the development is going into these cloud-based versions and like patrick said it's not a different code set but you have to get into the space in order to take advantage of the newer releases as it goes forward and then and then they're um going to be it's going to be advantageous to have sap uh putting those things in and maintaining that aspect. And so that's probably number two. And then number three really has to do with something Patrick said already is the right sizing. You know, I would say that usage of, of a lot of business object services has, you know, if you talk through different customers, you'll find different things, but by and large, a lot of people are taking Webby dumping it into Excel and then putting it into some sort of, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a glorified ETL tool in, in, mm -hmm. in many of the large accounts that I talk to. So well used because of all the security, all of the structure, all mm -hmm. the semantics, all the business user friendly way of, of interacting with your, 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 you know, stamped data. This is good. It's been through the process, mm -hmm. but once it drops out and moves into that uh, third party process, you kind of lose control from an IT standpoint. And so, um, connecting this with SAC um, and also giving your uh, people access to the, uh, the, the, you know, I, I'll even underline it with this, you know, coming from business objects, right? I was at business objects when SAP bought business objects and, and coming through the ecosystem. I've been on the partner side. I've been on SAP side. I've watched this thing grow and uh, come a long ways for a long time. And fundamentally, I actually came back to SAP because of the renewed focus on data and analytics. Um, it, there is fundamentally a much stronger um, cohesive strategy in this space that extends beyond just business objects today. And there's a lot that you can start taking advantage of if you continue on this trajectory. And so those, those are kind of the areas that I'm finding are resonating really well um yeah. from uh, from a getting started and a going forward standpoint and i know we were talking about that preparing this event i mean today you see a lot less people that are competent you know uh in business objects so it's it's going to be it's, it's starting to be a a resource for people you know you know bob j you know how how many years have you been supporting mm -hmm. bob j so because you've got all these old deployments, and are, are there any advantages there to be on uh, to go towards PC? Yeah, well, uh, sure. I, I think I think a lot of that goes back to what Nathan was saying about you know you know with the upgrades being included. Um, you know, you know, it's the upgrades have always been kind of a sticking point for for organizations. Mm -hmm. They you know they put them off as long as they can because you know they take time, they take money. Um, and so what we see is, you know, when when you have um, a version coming to end of maintenance, of course, you know, we at Protivity get tons of calls from all our clients wanting to upgrade. And, you know, so, um, you know, so we're, there's a huge rush to try to upgrade before it's out of support with with PCE. You're not going to have that issue because you're getting the upgrades every year, you know, on your schedule. Um, and and, you know, the majority of that is 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 included. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. there's obviously some testing and things like that you're going to want to do, but you don't have to have you know, either those you know, very skilled, you know, admit admin type resources on your team. And you don't have to necessarily hire a consulting firm like Protivity to do the upgrade for you. So I think that's a, a huge advantage is that they're they're rolling the, you know, the upgrades, the the infrastructure, the licensing, the support all into, you know, one subscription cost. And that, that's pretty and, interesting that you, you know, as a consulting firm, yeah, I mean, it's it's a big business. It's, yeah, no, it, it, it definitely. I'm, yeah. I'm actually surprised that you're mentioning that. So, what, what's the value there? Yeah, well, no, it's it's definitely. I mean, that's a service we provide that that's that's probably going uh, you know away for the most part. But at the end of the day, I'd rather be helping my clients get value out of their data uh, and helping them garner insights and and mm. implement planning and, and predictive analytics and things like that, rather than doing, you know, the tedious upgrades. Yeah. Right. Operational work is very, very uh, generally not very fun. 
Exactly. Right. Helping people with their strategy, helping people deliver yep. value, helping them architect and, and ultimately, you know, drive into the future and, and deliver business results. That's that's fun. And that, exactly. that holds for your people as well. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and really kind of, you know, another thing, too, is if you're worried about your user community and them getting perhaps bored or thinking Bob J's stale. Well, maybe it's not because maybe there are things that they've not even known Bob J can do because they're on several service packs back, right? Yep. Think back to the 4.2 service pack three flip over when, you know, we added custom visualizations, suddenly more kind of pseudo dashboarding capabilities. So there are a lot of things that the user community themselves might actually stick with Bob J and not try to find a shiny new third party toy just because it gives them a prettier picture when they know yep. that they've got the better analytic capability and then start talking about things like predictive and, and, and planning with, yep. with SAC. And it really becomes a, a much more holistic package, even for those who are more modern or, you know, think they're more modern. You know, one thing that's interesting, I think too, Nathan's comment earlier was that Bob is about 30 years old and uh, you know, in, in reality is still competent for, you know, data from, you know, from a data slicing perspective, bursting, et cetera. And when we see people saying, hey, I want to leverage some other BI solutions, et cetera, the reality is to rewrite everything that was done in Bob J, it's, mm -hmm. it's actually extremely expensive. Oh, yeah. you, you've got so much work behind. In fact, we, we see a lot of people saying, you know what, I want to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. We hear that, you know, uh, you know, frequently. And what we hear back is, well, that project that we thought that would take three months, mm -hmm. it might take two years, and very often it never ends because yep. people completely underestimated the impact of Bob J because it's it's actually very you don't see you know behind the scene what's going on, and Bob J is mm -hmm. actually pretty much used everywhere, right. So. Yeah, and and it's not just the you know the rewriting of the reports, but you've got that huge investment in the semantic layer with your universes, mm -hmm. right? That right. you know you've potentially got to recreate that somehow uh, as well, which adds to the the effort. So why not why not build on that rather than trying to rebuild it? Build on it by adding Analytics Cloud, um, you know, to get the additional capabilities you need. Mm. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. I think the, the universe is still the unsung hero mm -hmm. as much as it is the secret sauce. Right? Yep. I think that there's so much advantage to be had in that, which, you know, think back to that question earlier about HANA direct versus universe. And I, you know, I, I still, mm -hmm. I still believe very profoundly in, in what the universe gives to that lowest common denominator user in terms of the ability to drag and drop and, and get what they need. Nope. On PCE, how is support? Is it different than what you have today uh, on premise? Is are there any Nathan? You know, are there any differences there? Is it better? From a support standpoint, I mean, I would, I would say that you know, support of the application is probably about the same. Support overall in terms of what you have access to and what you can um and this kind of lends itself to, to muhammad's um uh, question you know how's the clients bo admins coordinate with sap and the infra uh infrastructure as a service to troubleshoot p1 and p2 issues when the on-site admin will be dependent on sap under a tight sla you know t the the ticketing system and the the general access to the folks managing um you know those slas are very um, well-defined. And uh, I don't know the specific SLAs off of the top of my head for that um, piece. However, your ability to connect and the workflow that you create with those people that are managing your environment um, ultimately gives you a broader spectrum of access to SAP and support overall that I think is beneficial and something that you don't see as a as an on-premise customer today. Okay. And, and also too, just from kind of what we've heard through the grapevine, just the, the fact that you don't have to spend days with support trying to help you with you trying to help support walk through your own environment compared to mm -hmm. my environment compared to Nathan's environment, right? 
that saves so much time as well in the getting to the meat of the problem perspective. Hey, from a, a sizing perspective, uh, mm -hmm. so, so you know you got edge deployments, small, medium, large. You got all all type of different sizes out there. Uh, so from a sizing perspective, from what size does it make sense mm -hmm. to go to PC? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a great question. And uh, I think it's probably between, you know, 150 and 180 end users um, is probably mm. that sweet spot. If you have that or more, um, Bob J. PCE is going to make uh, make a lot of sense. Um, you know, if you've got less than that, PCE may not be the right route just because of some some minimum um uh, pricing and things like that. But, uh, but you can still go to the cloud, right? Um, we've ha helped, uh, you know, we've got probably, you know, 50 plus clients right now that, that we manage on AWS, um, and, and on, and, and someone Azure as well. So, um, yeah, we can still help clients get to the cloud. Um, and then hopefully, uh, you know, in the future, SAP will, will, will change the, the licensing and, and allow, you know, smaller organizations to be part of PCE as well. But I think right now they're they're focused on you know the larger deployments initially. Okay, and uh, Patrick, in terms of services, what typically do you offer uh, for customers going to PCE? Do you've got any packages? Yeah. So we do have some packages, as we noted earlier, but you know, really, that's I think the sweet spot for partners like Protivity yeah. and others who who know Bob J probably better than some of our own internal contracting types. Yeah. And, um, and, and we, and we do offer that. I mean, we, we have, we can, um, uh, offer the, the full, you know, the full suite of, uh, you know, the migration, right. You know, the, the, um, the preparation, the staging that we talked about earlier on Linux and then the migration yeah. will obviously work very closely with the client and with the PCE team to make sure the PCE team has all the information on configurations and things like that, that they need. Um, but one of the things we also do, is, you know, you know, quite well, we partner with you guys to do an assessment up front, which I think is crucially important for anyone, whether they're going to, to PCE or, or, or their own cloud or what have you. Um, but we'll do an assessment of your environment. Uh, we look at, you know, things like the, the actual usage, to really get what the licensing should be. Um, we can look at, you know, unused uh, users and, and, and content and help you do some cleanup. Um, because if you're going to go to the cloud, just take what you need, right? Don't, there's no sense in taking a lot of stuff that's not used anymore. Uh, we Through that assessment, we also look at, you know, what are the, the, the key things that you maybe have in your current environment that are great use cases for, um, for, uh, for analytics cloud as well, right? Like things like maybe you still have some Excelsius dashboards yeah. or some, uh, some info spaces and things like that. So, um, so all of those things that, um, you know, we'll look at in a, um, in a, in a, um, a sort of a, a free assessment that, that we do in partnership with, uh, with wisdom. And, and again, there, the, one of the goals of the assessment is to give you an idea of what are the timelines, what are the costs? Cause that's, uh, what's the effort uh, to do? Yep. It's hard to thing. make decisions without the facts. Yep, yeah. absolutely. And, that, and that's the whole point, right? Is, that. is yeah. providing the facts. <laughs> Deciphering that from your business objects is is traditionally very difficult. Yeah. And I don't know many who can get it without some sort of third party uh, plug in on that space. Mm -hmm. So, you know, no, no better team, frankly, than than the wisdom and the, the productivity team to to support getting the facts and helping you make a fact-based decision as you grow into uh, what, what's right for you. And, and Absolutely. We've been doing that for over 15 years and we support, I think, thousands of migrations. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess we, we have some know-how there. So, hey, Patrick, I, I think you've got a one or two more slides left. Yep. So this one is just sort of, and you know, I won't kind of read through it, but just you can see the different levels of service of SLAs that we have, and the different contract terms and the landscape, which I think we've pretty much discussed through throughout. But you know, Bruno will have the slides for you after this to kind of dive a little deeper on that. Some key things I think to note, you know, um, ninety nine point seven percent availability is what we're seeing right now from the overall SLA and service desk. 
24 by 7, which is nice, and service delivery for you 10 by 5 on local business hours as well. And then this is really just kind of a summary of, of everything from what's included to the optional offerings that we have on our side from anything from disaster recovery to um, you know, non-productive uh, deployments to additional storage and different app servers. Kind of talks about the t-shirt sizes, the yearly release cycle, et cetera. So this is really kind of the end, the uh, summary of what PCE is. Hey, thank you very much, Nathan. Do you have anything you want to share with the audience about PC? Yeah, there's actually two things. One, um, Vinay earlier put up um, a question around ingress and egress and cost of data transfer. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to quickly address that because the way that um, PCE is licensed, there is no metric for ingress and egress. Um, so it is all in one cost, um, and you won't see any variability from that standpoint. Right. You know, if you need more users or you need a different t-shirt sizing, or you want to adjust your, um, cores or whatever from, you know, those are the kind of things that you would, um, you would have variability on from, from an SAP standpoint. So in, um, that, in that sense, it's still sort of on-prem, if you will from a perspective, right? It's about user and about hardware and not as much about the data ingress as you get with the traditional cloud. Right. Um, another piece that I wanted to make is that the, I, I think that the, the thing that's resonating that we've worked through on a couple of these with clients who are looking to invest and have invested in towards the PC direction is that if you are not, or, or if you're not moving business objects towards the cloud, in the next two years, either business objects to the cloud or your BI capabilities into, you know, retiring business objects, for instance, if you're not moving in that direction and you're going to go through two upgrades wow. to continue on your pace towards keeping, you know, supported versions, keep up with new features, et cetera. Um, I'm seeing that the business case starts to really make sense for retiring that maintenance taking those upgrades off the table because they're included within the service, um, streamlining the maintenance and care and feeding of your system um, and focusing on business value is really resonating very well, both at a, you know, a mind level, a strategy level and a dollars and cents level, which mm -hmm. are important, right? We all know that at the end of the day, nobody's going to sign contracts and spend money just because it, it, it looks pretty or, or, or we think it might work. No, we need to, we need to know, we need to have a business case. And that, that is coming together to a point where, you know, getting real, you know, people, people, like we said, are moving in this direction. So those are the two things I wanted to, to leave on. That makes actually a lot of sense because you're right. You will be doing some more upgrades and is, there's going to be a cost. Mm -hmm. And you're going to pay for that. So you're probably better off to go there sooner than later, I guess. Refreshing hardware. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, Nathan, that, that's a, an event. That's a, yeah. Where are the POs? <laughs> so, yeah, no, definitely. That's really a, it, it's a strong, it's a very strong uh, argument here that you have on that because, yes, there will be a cost to do all these upgrades that you haven't assess yet but there will be one and uh where their sap will be handling that part so. muhammad actually pro proposed another good question here um that's interesting how can we audit the contents between source and destination after a migration to verify contents or apple to apple now, i yeah. actually turn that to the rockstar um as as patrick dean yeah i'll uh, yeah uh, i can speak to that um what what we like to do there so so we offer so we'll typically do some um you know we'll test each report you know uh one report from each universe just to make sure it runs and returns data but what we really recommend is leveraging um a tool from wisdom called 360 bind which allows you to do um automated testing and so it'll actually run the report in the in the old system, run in the new system, and compare uh, the data, compare the the actual 
uh, report structure pixel for pixel and identify any any differences there. So um, we we really like that tool and 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 um, and have used that at a number of our clients, uh, especially where you know where they're you know mission critical reports, they're client facing right. things like that. Right. Absolutely recommend doing that. Yeah, I would double down on that too because I would say that one of the big questions that gets back is that we're going to the cloud. What's our performance gonna be? You know, what kind of performance? And I argue that performance is often more a um, an expectation, right? What should my expectation? Twenty seconds is admittedly a long time for a report to come back, but if I know that it should take twenty seconds and it took took twenty seconds in my old environment, well then. You know, we're we're still on on par because at the end of the day, you still need user adoption, right? That is the ROI of any yep. data and analytics project. You you want your users and especially your key uh, executive users to be happy on the other side of any type of move like that. And yep. so, from a risk reduction standpoint, Bind makes all the sense in the world yep. uh, to to deploy in that scenario. And in fact, in terms of regressions, and we'll be talking, actually, that's a good uh, intro for the next session. That's something that we're going to cover with Maurizio. And of course, we do regression testing, testing at the document level. Of course, we check, the, the, you know, the million dollar question from or after migration is, hey, my reports, my web used to be faster before and people at the end, they have no clue. And that's actually something that we test. We're able to compare apples to apples and we'll have the answer. Yeah. We'll yeah. monitor also the scheduling, uh, which is really important. We'll monitor also the regressions and metadata mm -hmm. to see, hey, has all the content been moved? Has my security, is, is it exactly the same? This is the type of thing that we can document and report because if if there is any doubt, people will lose trust and, and there will be no adoption or very limited yeah. adoption. Yeah, and one thing you, that brings up a good point. You mentioned performance, and I know performance is is a, a key concern uh, with anyone when they're moving to the cloud. Um, and one thing we've actually seen, you know, it, it seems somewhat surprising, right, is that a lot of our clients who've moved to PCE or business objects in the cloud have actually seen improvements in performance. And I think a lot of that has to do with you know you're you're running on. Um, you know, the, on systems that are much more powerful than probably what you had on premise, because, you know, we see this all the time, right? Clients, even if they've upgraded, they've stayed on the same old hardware that they had 10 years yeah. ago. And, uh, and those, so things don't perform well. So I think a lot of our clients have been surprised to see performance improvements uh, when they move to PC. You know, one thing that we've seen over the years with customers doing cloud migration or cloud migrations has been actually some customers had issues with performances because, you know, the way they've done their migration, the way they've mm -hmm. addressed that pro or that issue mm -hmm. was not correct. Actually, we've seen migrations that were that failed that were rejected by the business mm -hmm. because it was so slow. And I mm -hmm. know there it takes them know how mm -hmm. on understanding what will help to boost the performances where the data is. Uh, you know, but there are a lot of things with a lot of common sense, but that actually can be something challenging. That's uh, that can be an issue. Anyway, guys, uh, Nathan, it was great to see you again here. Uh, you know, we good to really be good to be back on the on the 360 360 wisdom uh, train. <laughs> Definitely, and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to uh, to work with you. You know. Patrick Sims, uh, you know, we'll be talking to you soon in the one of the next sessions as well with the mm -hmm. talk to the experts. So I hope you've got answers to everything. There are a lot of nasty <laughs> here, Patrick. So uh, and I told answers. everyone that you know you've got any nasty questions, ask Patrick Sims. Ask so. Pat Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> and if we don't have the answer, we'll just give you know your phone number, everything. So. <laughs> and then Patrick Neesmith as well. You know, it's great to have you, and I think you'll be also joining the the next session as well. It's awesome to have you on. Yep. Uh, so, Thanks for having me, Bruno, and uh, look forward to seeing you in Atlanta next week. <laughs>